Anonymous messages and local context were the perfect mix to make the popular social network Yik Yak come to life back in 2013. They were also the poison to kill it. And it gave us their epitaph, died too young and too soon. The social network devised by two young roommates at Furman University in South Carolina, yes, Facebook style, went from popular to irrelevant. Brooks Buffington and Tyler Droll managed to sneak Yik Yak into the top 10 social media apps in the App Store shortly after its debut. The idea of expressing their thoughts without showing their name and allowing other users to read it within one mile away conquered young people from hundreds of universities and campuses in the United States. The magic not only dazzled the students, but also the investors who in three rounds of funding granted $73.5 million in venture capital to Buffington and Droll. Not bad at all. But it was a matter of time. Anonymity, which affects everything it touches, turned this social network into a catalog of cyberbullying and sexist, racist, and hateful comments. Did the formula for disaster grow as the app did? How is that a startup valued at over $400 million could not stop its fall? The attempt was made, but too late. So this is Startup Forensics Yik Yak. Yik Yak wasn't the first app developed by Brooks Buffington and Tyler Droll. Their previous attempts include a game named Fry Cook, which really never took off, and an app for asking quick, simple questions named Dico, short for dichotomy. In the beginning, frat brothers Doug Worstler and Tyler Droll developed the game Fry Cook for iPhone. It was more than a school assignment, but less than a first attempt. Buffington joined to form a trio when they developed Dico. After that, they established Locos Engineering LLC in June 2012. Brooks Buffington and Tyler Droll finished their university career and then returned home, while Warstler returned to finish college. It was 2013 when Yik Yak emerged. Locus Engineering LLC was dissolved and Warstler was out of the equation. Later, he sued the founders, claiming his place in the Raising Unicorn. Keep it simple. The idea of Yik Yak's founders was quite simple. Short messages called Yaks to share with anyone who was close, very close, without having to reveal an identity. Now, what sort of comments or conversations were being shared, opinions, class note requests, complaints about the cafeteria food, or it was simply a place to express your thoughts without the risk of being judged. The app spread quickly through the campus in Furman University where its founder studied and then came to Georgia Tech and the rest is history. It went viral in American universities and even reached other countries such as Spain, Germany, Brazil, and Australia. While alive, Yik Yak captured the attention and the financing of over 10 investors, and it relied on Atlanta, even though it seemed almost an escapable requirement to dive into the Silicon Valley environment to get financing. What they did right. Yik Yak was a social network that would reach a coveted market sector, university students. At the peak of its fame in 2014, Yik Yak was better ranked than giants like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest in the App Store, counting 1.5 million downloads that year. But success was not only achieved behind a keyword, it was about generating local context in the application, but it was also diving into the university campuses, making special events and knowing their potential users. This was an important and very well-performed strategy. They even got former President George H. W. Bush to wear Yik Yak socks. More muscle than their competitors. During Yik Yak's prime, other apps like Secret and Formspring used anonymity to grow a community of users around them. These apps ran with the same fate of disappearing, but they died even earlier in 2015. They couldn't beat Yik Yak in terms of venture capital either. Secret, a confessions app, barely managed to raise $35 million for financing. After their initial boost, they failed to appear among the 100 most popular apps in the App Store, but they still reached around 50 million users in total. In April 2015, David Baito, CEO of Secret, confirmed the closure of the applications and said they had returned part of the money invested to their partners. On the other hand, Formspring, an application to ask anonymous questions, lost ground to movements of companies like Tumblr and only obtained around $14 million in venture capital. Founded in 2009, it reached 30 million registered users and 4 billion publications. It finally closed its doors in March 2013. At the end of 2014, Yik Yak announced a round of financing from Sequoia Capital, although after that, downloads and traffic rates began to fall. When did the ship start sinking? Although the initial enthusiasm of freely asking who wants to go out for a beer later could keep Yik Yak's flame alive, Anonymity also gave place to disturbing situations like receiving negative comments about your image or being close or in the same room as your stalker and not knowing who that was. Furthermore, you are not in college forever. 
I mean, some people are, but most students graduated, moved to other cities, and interest in the app decreased. However, the app played an important role when in the middle of a shooting in the library of Florida State University in 2015, the students used Yik Yak to let authorities know where they were hiding. Gradually, the app began to receive the attention of the press, but not because of its rapid growth or its ability to raise capital, but because of its difficulty in stopping insults and cyberbullying. The founders resorted to some measures to try to limit the comments that undermined the image of the application, such as Yakarma. Yakarma allowed the Yakker community to regulate the comments, giving positive or negative votes to the messages that were posted. So the messages that received five negative votes went completely out of the feed. It wasn't enough. Cases like that of young Elizabeth Long echoed in the press. Elizabeth tried to commit suicide, and while she was recovering, she saw some messages in Yik Yak which invited her to do it again. Another well-known case was that of feminist Grace Rebecca Mann, who appeared dead in Feminist United denounced that she had received numerous threats through the anonymous platform. Yik Yak began to become popular in high schools, though it was banned in many of them. This forced Yik Yak to find solutions, offering geofences. The schools were just required to fill out a form in which they indicated its coordinates to request the service to stop working there, no matter the number of downloads or users in the area more than 100,000 schools were eventually fenced. Chicago was a particularly problematic site for the application. In an interview, one of the founders said that it was curious that people did not stop talking about Yik Yak in that state, but when they came to download it, they simply could not use it. Ross Ellis, the founder and chief executive of Stump Out Bullying, said in an interview with the New York Times that he had parents reaching out to say kids as young as nine years old had been threatened and harassed through the application. The proximity that initially caught the user's attention eventually made them fear for their safety, especially those who were harassed through the platform. Yik Yuk also tried to motivate its followers to create a username. Later, this was made mandatory, and when the interest in the application fell, the founders had to take back the measure. But at that point, the application had already become a ghost town. Neither the private chats nor the list of the best yaks was enough to revive the dying unicorn. So what happened to them? Drolls say they stopped listening to their users. They distanced themselves from them, and according to him, that's when the fall began. Finally, in 2017, they had to say goodbye to the application, and the company that was once valued at over $400 million chose to sell part of their IP and its team, engineers, for $1 million to the mobile payment company, Square. Yik Yik went from heaven to hell. So, lessons learned. Power and responsibility. Generating expectations in users and investors is a great power that comes with great responsibility. Anonymity and proximity. The thing that made your company grow can also destroy it if you don't evolve. Change the rules of the game. Listen to what your customers want and give it to them, but don't pivot so much that they don't recognize you or identify themselves with the product that they signed up for. Bad press. If they're talking about your company, it's fine. But if they associate it with negative situations all the time, well, it's not fine. When the press talks about your product, act as soon as possible. Grow with your audience. It's fine that you focus on your customers, but think about how you can continue to be relevant to them, especially if they're college students who will soon graduate and go home. Plain and simple, if you lose relevance, your end is inevitable. <laughs>